Welcome to Real Foot Forward, a West Tennessee podcast from Discovery Park of America in Union City, Tennessee. Today's episode is brought to you by the West Tennessee Delta Heritage Center, home of the Tina Turner Museum. very much. Emily, welcome everybody to Real Foot Forward, a West Tennessee podcast where we explore the history, the incredible people, and the fascinating culture of our home here in West Tennessee. I'm your host, Scott Williams. Okay, Emily, as we do every week before I introduce today's guest, what is something you have discovered here at Discovery Park of America? Today, I discovered that our very own Sabin's Cafe is named after Vern and Noni Sabin, who were photographers that took photos of the Real Foot region. Thank you so much, Emily. I really appreciate that. Um, Everything you always discover here at Discovery Park of America is fascinating, and you never know what's right around the corner, just like you never know exactly what's going to be on the menu when you talk to Scott and Tanya Melton. They are owners of Miso Hungry, a catering and food truck business, Um, and I'm so excited uh, to talk to them about the great Southern comfort food that they're serving up here in Northwest Tennessee. Hey, how are you doing? I am fantastic. So first of all, tell me a little bit about your background. Where did you, where did you grow up? Then later on, I want to hear what brought you to our neck of the woods. Uh, I'm originally from Bolivar, Tennessee. Don't hold that against me. I'm not crazy. <laughs> <laughs> See, and you know what? For people who aren't listening, uh, they might not know that Western State Mental Hospital has, it looms large in West Tennessee's history. Um, a lot of people know that that's where, you know, um, people who needed help back in the day. Um, I don't think it's still that, but anyway, it's still physically there. Do you go back uh, to your home and ever see it still? I do. I do. It it's part of it large. looks part yes. of it looks abandoned, and they've revamped the other part of the campus. Yeah, yeah. It's um, it is uh, fascinating um, to see uh, what those buildings look like, and they've still got things like I snuck on there one time and looked in the windows, and it's pretty scary. It Ooh. is. It is. One side looks like it's uh a major production for a horror film. <laughs> it really does. So anyway, so you grew up in Bolivar. Um, and then uh, what was your child look like, how, childhood like? Uh, I'm the baby of five. And um, when we were growing up, uh, all us girls had to go in the kitchen with grandma for a certain amount of time every day when she would cook. And she would, after so long, she would release everybody to go play. And once she released everybody, I stayed in the kitchen. So that's where I got my background from. So I've been cooking by myself since I was about eight years old. Now, what do you uh, remember the most? Like what meals do you remember your grandmother cooking the most? Um, she did a lot of Southern comfort, but I think that the one dessert or it's not so much a meal, but it's a dessert. She would, uh, my grandmother could make something out of nothing. So when Things got kind of down to the bottom of the barrel. She would make this dessert called butter roll. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's it's my top selling dessert to date. And um, it's how I hooked old Scott Milton. (laughs) (laughs) So you came from uh, Bolivar. um, And uh, how did you how long did you uh, live in Bolivar? I lived in Bolivar until my late 20s which I I just turned 45 Tuesday. Oh, happy Um, birthday. Thank you. Thank you. And I moved, uh, I moved away from Bolivar in my late twenties, early thirties, something like that. And, uh, lived in Jackson for about 10, 12 years. And I'm kind of jumping the gun, I guess, but the way we ended up here in Kenton, um, I lost my house to a house fire and, Ended up getting an apartment downtown Jackson. Very expensive, uh, but it's what I needed. So uh, we were paying eighteen thirty five a month for rent, and I just started praying and asking God, "What was my next step? What was our next direction?" And I said, "I'm yeah, I could be living in a nice home for this month for this much money." So started praying, and the Lord spoke to me and said that my time had expired in Jackson. And me with my hard head itself, I was still looking for a place in Jackson and nothing went through. And my husband's dad 
lives in Troy and we went to visit one weekend. And so we were riding around and I said, baby, it's nice down here. I said, I could live down here. And he said, are you serious? I'm, I'm originally from Rutherford. So. <laughs> okay. So you're from Rutherford and I'm going right. to, I'm going to ask you about your background in just a minute. Yeah. A little bit more about your childhood. So, um, uh, he said, really, you can live down here? I said, yes, yeah. I, I think this is where God will have us to be. And he said, well, go on Zillow and see what you find. And the house that we live in now is actually the first house that we found. And uh, it's the old Bell house. And uh, John and Kyla Cooper lived here. So that's how we got hooked up with Kiwanis and just, I mean, everything just fell into place. It was just steps ordered by God. Now, how about you, Scott? Um, tell me a little bit about your childhood. Uh, I grew up at, uh, just right down the road at, on Heritage Drive, uh, home of David Crockett, uh, Rutherford, Tennessee. I went to Gibson County. I'm class of 96. Uh, I was a class president. I was in band. I was the, the football the football uh, person, I guess you would say. Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> um, I was, uh, you know, I – Always, I worked at Food Right. My first job was Food Right with Joey Hayes. Uh, you know, good. Always in the community. Uh, went to the little New Hope Baptist Church. My 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 uh, dad <clears throat> worked at Goodyear, and uh, I've actually worked at Goodyear before in my life, my career too. But my dad worked at Goodyear, and uh, he was in the National Guard Armory. And uh, my mom worked at Brown Shoe and Dyer. Uh, they. They uh, got divorced when I was around six, five, I believe, five. But um, they were, my family never lost. Like it was, I had four or five Christmases. You know, I'd go to dad's house and I'd go to grandma's side on both sides. You know, we, all my family got along. Well, my granddad, he uh, he had one job. He had two jobs his whole life. One, one was before college. And the other one he had was right there in Union City. Also, he worked at the Union City Daily Messenger for 75 years and uh until the last couple of three weeks three to four weeks before he died he was still going into work there at the messenger he was 93 years old wow what did he, what did he do he was a uh, uh, scott him and mr critchlow were the only people allowed to sign the checks so pretty much everything except for but he was over um uh, he was real big when uh, when everything swapped from paper to computer to the Macintosh Apple. He was sent to New York to uh, learn on this little bitty green screen, you know. And so when I was a kid, I was at the Messenger playing school on that little, I mean, playing the pool and on that little bitty green screen there on the Macintosh. So that's, you know, so that's my roots, I guess, through here. I went, uh, far as growing up, I've lived everywhere from Jackson to uh, Memphis to Nashville. Um, I used to, right there in Union City, I used to actually, I was the uh, manager of the AT&T store for about three years there. So I've had ties in this area, but just I've never came back to live here, you know, until uh, we were just cruising in the Corvette one day and we saw this house for a split second on Zillow. It was up. And then it was down. They took it down and we just pulled up and we closed on it three months later and we're here. <laughs> so so um, where did you two meet? We met on Tinder. A dating <laughs> app. There you go. That's, that's excellent. A success I, story. I was, I was actually not supposed to, I don't know if anybody knows anything about the Tinder apps or any of the things. If you're like tired of folks that are in your area, you can just set it to like, okay, I want to like people like a hundred miles away. You know, I don't want to date anybody. And she had it set for, I was working for Terminex at the time as a home inspector. And I was on the way other side of the state. And, uh, I picked up on hers cause we actually only lived just we lived, five miles apart. <laughs> we actually lived about five miles apart at the time, but <laughs> at my radius set where you had to be at least 50 miles away from me to even see my picture. Cause I, I just, I didn't want to date anybody from around, you know, from the same neck of the woods. I, I just wanted a fresh start, but. So praise the Lord. I was in Ripley that day. <laughs> <laughs> and how long ago was this? It was, it'll be three years. It'll uh, be three years in April. In April. Yeah. yeah. We, we're, we're, this year is going to be now. you mark your, everybody mark their calendars. Now two, it's a Tuesday now. 
Okay. This Tuesday, 2 22 22, we'll be married two, two years. years. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Congratulations. <laughs> That's great. So, so you got married. I'm sure when you got married, having a food truck was not necessarily uh, what you thought you were going to be doing right away. How did that come about? Well, um, I st- I opened my first restaurant in 2015, and uh, from 2015 up until <laughs> I had met Scott, I had opened three, three. Uh, I did three brick and mortar in three different places, and um, went through a kind of a rough divorce, and just gave the last restaurant away. Got tired of fighting in court. Just gave the last restaurant away. So, um, in that. Uh, when when I when we lived downtown Jackson, uh, we actually had just leased the entire upstairs of the building that we lived in. So we lived on one side. On the other side, to the far end, was a beauty salon, and then on the other end, to the far end, was me so hungry, me so hungry, <laughs> brick had, and mortar again. Uh, we had Exodus and me so hungry upstairs. Yeah. There. So we had about five, about forty five hundred square feet, I guess, mm-hmm. and uh, so work and two home and two businesses were about 30, 40 feet apart. Yeah. Th- yeah. We never left. So, you know, we had our biggest brainstorm in times. We'd just get out and hurt. Like it's only so much you can take. T- I mean, I had the dog trained our, uh, our biggest dog, Ginger. I had her trained that she wouldn't even need a leash. And I would run downtown to the courthouse, let her chase the squirrels downtown Jackson and then call her back and then go back. I, we, there's only so much saying that there's only so much you can walk the dog, you know, around town. And yeah. so at night we would get out and take the top off of the Corvette and just ride. And that's when we have our most intimate times and, you know, and, and really talk. And, uh, and I'm a big believer in, uh, uh, your, your, your tongue is, is a sword. It's a sword. It's, it, you know, what you, it's a pen. You, you can, you can, what you, what you say, your words are powerful, whether they be good or bad. Um, so I've always been strong words and, and just, just to put it this way, my favorite thing I've ever, like when I, I guess, quote unquote, retired from Terminex, um, I, I asked God just to let me, uh, just show me where to go, how to do, I hadn't punched a clock in over almost four years, almost three, almost three years. Mm -hmm. And we have not missed a beat. Uh, uh, this is during Corona. During COVID, we got COVID on our honeymoon before it was even, we got married in February. Oh, yeah, that was. So COVID hadn't even hit here yet. It hit in March. We opened up two businesses during a, a pandemic. And uh, we've we'll, we'll paid off a a, uh, a 24-foot food trailer and uh, a truck to pull it all in this time. And it ain't nothing but the grace of God that's done it. And it, we, you know, a big believer and we, we, we watch our words and we, sow. we, sow. we help the other person. We look the other, we look back and pull somebody up, you know, and you know, the only way is up, you know? So it's just, maybe I'm jumping the gun there, but <laughs> no, 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 that's, that's uh, really interesting. I do want to um, find out from Tanya, what was your very first restaurant that you opened? The very first one that I opened was called Fats Country Cooking. <laughs> <laughs> and where was it it was in jackson tennessee uh about a block from lane college and what was the best seller there i did a lot of breakfast then so um probably the tenderloin and gravy and fried potatoes and homemade biscuits oh. i i got a request for that at least twice a week so i had to have that on the menu at least twice a week and uh Are salmon you- croquettes also <laughs> I guarantee you this, that she sold out every day. <laughs> <laughs> and so um, I'm uh, by the name, I'm assuming that the things on the menu were a lot of the home cooking that your grandmother had made, those kind of things. Is that correct? Yeah, it's a Southern comfort, beans and greens and taters and anything with gravy and rolls and j- just about anything that you can name that's gonna put you to sleep after you eat it mm-hmm. I, I cook it <laughs> <laughs> um so the two of you um are uh trying to figure out what to do and you decide 
that you want to do a food truck. Talk to me a little bit about the process that you went through to make the final decision and, and what did you do to make it come to reality? Um, we were actually looking at getting the food trailer when the when, when, when COVID first when, hit. Right when we first hit, right. Um, mm-hmm. when we had to shut down brick and mortar and per we were just CDC. Take it outside. Um we had just got contracted with Corm out south in Jackson. We were feeding there twice a week. I mean, we we had a lot of events that were just scheduled. And we could still they they still wanted us to feed them, but we we wasn't allowed inside yeah, because so. of because of the. And so we were just like, well, what's better than not get a food truck now? Right. Just we went, should we should probably mention that you were at the time having a, a pretty healthy catering business. I assume. Oh yes, yeah. yes. yes. We were yeah. we were. Uh, corn was what how many people uh, it was 400 people twice a week twice a week so that <laughs> you know that was yeah we were and i and it just wasn't it just wasn't time i guess i don't i don't know we wanted it but just wasn't time <laughs> yeah and um after you know after covid died down a little bit and we were able to go back into operation we could not go into the facilities so we would literally have to set up outside and serve so that's where the whole food truck idea was birthed i was like well we're outside anyway we might as well have a mobile kitchen so. and so and, the, and then our food truck it is it's not a food truck it's an actual mobile kitchen mm. um I've, I've worked in kitchens from nashville to memphis in different restaurants and this this is the biggest galley kitchen i've ever worked in <laughs> it's nice it's super nice and uh just been very blessed with it. So how do you, how do you, uh, you decide to do this? You've got the place to do it. How do you decide what you're going to put on the menu and where do you park your truck? So people will know to come buy your food. Um, well, right now we, we've been parked, we've been doing some, well, we got the food trailer. We've been having some issues with the builder. There's still a few things that were in our contract that haven't been completed in the trailer, but it is operational right now. So um, we've been doing, we've been just going to little towns around here as for right now. Um, And we've been going to different places per request. And of course, you know, you got, we've just, we're coming off right now, the holidays. We, we've been uh, about five events a week. a week for the last eight weeks <laughs> yeah. here. So I'm giving mama a rest. I'm kind of, and she, I can tell she's getting a little, she's getting a little antsy. She's getting a little <laughs> antsy. I made three pies, got all, all this stuff up here. So even it's time when, for us to get rolling again. Yeah, even when I'm not working, I'm, I'm still in the kitchen. That's just my place of peace. And I'm the world's best taste tester. <laughs> yeah. I've, I'd have to go to the gym every single day. I oh, bet. That's another thing that's uh, that's that, that she's accomplished. That's that's uh, that hardly nobody knows. But I, I always, I mean, this this woman used to weigh four hundred eleven pounds, and uh, she's what you know. I'm not gonna give your weight out, but she's she's one sixty three now. You know. Yeah, I was gonna uh, say when I've seen you, you're very uh, schvelt. <laughs> you'd you'd never know. She's uh she she she's a blessing to me and uh, a blessing to this food and I I'm here to tell you that she prays over the food uh she's got she I've always told her she's my angel and I'm uh you know she's I'm blessed to have her but we're blessed to have her in this area we really are because uh I've never I, I've worked under some sous shells I've been a I kind of like a sous I've been a training shell I know I know about the stuff this woman doesn't own a measuring cup. Um, I mean, and I, and she, and she means business when she's in there. Uh, you know, it's, it's wash your hands, got you, got your hair nets on. It's, it's business when you're in there, you know, and it's, um, she, we're very blessed to have her. Uh, and like I was saying, she prays over the food while she's cooking it, you know, prays the calories out of it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was going to ask Tanya. What's the secret, uh, to being able to, uh, both maintain, you know, the, the weight and the health, healthy weight that you want to, um, but also be around all that food. Um, jokingly as, as I'm cooking, because you're having to make sure it's right as you go, by the time you're done with it, you don't want it. 
And the other the other part of that is uh, honestly just moderation. Just uh, if I want something, I'll have a little bit of it so I don't overdo it. But um, I guess I'm just used to it. So it, it really doesn't bother me. It's it's a lifestyle. It really is. It's a lot. It's a lifestyle change. It's not just, you know, once you I was over the, you know, 300 pound mark myself, you know, and it's once once you once you tired and get fed up with doing that, I can eat anything I want to, you know, but in proportion, I can't eat it three days in a row. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I guess being around all that food too helps you not want to eat as it, much of it as like I would. I would eat your whole all, all the food you got in there probably. Yeah, I, I want somebody else's good food, but I mean, it's it's kind of hit and miss, you know, with everything that's gone on and transpired since COVID. It seems like uh, quality has gone down in so many places, and that's something that I prize myself on. Uh, you, usually, if you go somewhere, you have to choose quantity or quality, and with me so hungry, you get both. That's excellent. We're going to take a break. And when we get back, I'm going to ask you a little bit more um, about the types of food uh, that you're uh, cooking. So we'll be right back. Okie doke. The West Tennessee Delta Heritage Center in Brownsville, Tennessee at exit 56 off I-40 offers an authentic Southern experience showcasing the history and culture of rural West Tennessee. Inside, visitors can learn about the history of cotton, explore the scenic and wild Hatchie River, and get to know the legendary musicians who call West Tennessee home. Also located on the grounds is Flag Grove School, a childhood school of Tina Turner and the last home of blues pioneer Sleepy John Estes. To learn more about the center, visit westtnheritage.com. I hope you're enjoying the Real Foot Forward podcast from Discovery Park of America. I'm sure you are, so please be sure to subscribe, rate, and leave only positive reviews on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. It really does uh, help us get the word out about what we're doing here on Real Foot Forward. This is your host, Scott Williams, and our guest today, our guests today are Scott and Tanya Melton, um, and we're talking about Me So Hungry, uh, the, the food uh, the food truck and um, catering, I guess I should say that they do. I've actually uh, benefited from uh, the catering. I've had had your uh, food a number of times. Um, and I'm curious to know uh, what is the thing in your catering business now that you guys get requested the most? Uh, I guess it would have to be uh, the different desserts as far as... Uh, well, around around the holidays, I had, I think absolutely, I think during the, from Thanksgiving to Christmas, we probably catered about 20, 20. 22 events. 20, 24. And absolutely everyone except for one requested chicken and dressing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. Had- okay. So this is a good, I was going to ask you uh, something like this, but I'm curious. Uh, tell us a little bit about how you make chicken and dressing because my, you know, my wife is from Boise, Idaho. And so oh, they that, make dressing a certain way up there. That, my family that, makes it the old fashioned way. I'm curious how y'all make it. I you, I make cornbread. I've dressing. never, I've never seen. And I will say this. I had grandmas and aunts. I grew up in, you know, with, with women cooking. I've never seen how she makes it like this either. So it's, it's, it's a, all kinds of different ways to make cornbread. I mean, it's, uh, Dressing. I make cornbread dressing with celery and onions and peppers and sage and different seasonings. Uh, I do not use stuffing. I do not use light bread, uh, biscuits. I've seen it done so many different ways, but mine is cornbread dressing. It's and, full of about- and the chick you pull the chicken all apart and put it all mixed up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now um, I have. Now I sure ain't gonna tell you what's eating all that. Now. <laughs> I have had requests uh, because I grew up just having the chicken in the dressing, but I did have requests where some families did a whole roasted or smoked turkey and the dressing as a side, did they didn't want the, the meat in the dressing. So I've done it both ways, but it's always cornbread dressing. And then if, uh, if you, I was going to come over to y'all's house and right. you were going to really impress me, 
Um, oh, what good. what would the whole meal? Tell me about the whole meal. What would you put on the table for me to enjoy? Probably my Mississippi pot roast. I I forgot about that. That's been a big hit uh, here these last few months. Tell them the whole spread. Mississippi pot roast, five cheese mac and cheese, uh, garlic mashed potatoes, seasoned green beans, sweet potato casserole, and I make uh, I cook mixed greens. I do collards, mustard, turnip, kale, and they're just swimming in ham hock. <laughs> oh my goodness. That I, I gained weight just sitting here listening to you talk. Um, do, what do you put on your sweet potatoes? Do you do uh, do you do marshmallows or like pecans and crunchy? She makes her own caramel and 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 just topping crazy stuff. I do three different kinds. <laughs> I do uh, and I make jokes all the time because you, uh, for anybody that's listening. I'm a black woman and my husband's white. So I make jokes all the time, you know. Uh, I make, uh, because when I did some for uh, the holidays, well, for this white family, they wanted marshmallows on top of theirs. So I do them with marshmallows. And then I did them for a a black family and they wanted pecans and the brown sugar crumble and the oatmeal flakes. Mm. And I also do it with uh, salted caramel and pecans. Yeah, the salted caramel and pecan. That that mm. that's really good. That sounds have delicious. Ever, have you ever had food give you cold chills? <laughs> no. Well, no. You, then. <laughs> I haven't been eating right, have I? I need I need to eat right. I need to eat some of that, more of y'all's food. That gave uh, me cold chills, and I'm not even eating it. <laughs> <laughs> and then what? What are we gonna have for dessert? Ooh. For dessert, we will probably have cheesecake. banana. He said banana pudding cheesecake. I, I make like 26 different flavors of homemade baked cheesecake. Uh, that's one of my favorites, the banana pudding cheesecake. I was going to say banana pudding, uh, but in addition to just it being a phenomenal banana pudding, I make homemade vanilla pound cake and cut it up in little cubes and put it in my banana pudding. Oh, that sounds so good. <laughs> <laughs> What, um, if somebody's, you know, all this great talk about your food, um, obviously some people may want to get you to cater things, but also people want to, uh, try your food whenever they see you out. Um, how do they find out where you're going to be or also contact you in order to get you to cater something? Facebook. All my information is on Facebook. Um, the name of our page is, is me so hungry. And, um, Anything that I post on the business page is also on my personal page, Tanya Milton. Uh, So right now, Facebook is the easiest way to see where we are, what we're doing, what we're serving, and phone numbers on there as well. Um, We get requests for certain things. When we started catering for Kiwanis, the first meal, they they told us what they wanted. Kiwanis has not requested a specific meal since then. They allow me to cook whatever I want. And if anybody uh, is wanting to know where they can for sure uh, taste your food, they could uh, be a guest at uh, the Union City Kiwanis Club because that's what you're talking about. You cater their lunch every every week, and it's delicious. I've been uh, privy to that several times. And, uh, I do believe the attendance has gone up since we've um, been uh, serving yeah, there. No doubt. No doubt at all. Um, well, do you have any recipes or anything like that on your Facebook page? I do not share recipes. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Oh, because you do it all by memory. She right. Does. And I but I could I could tell someone how I the the best way to I'm I, I'm actually trying to recreate myself through my daughter, through my 22-year-old daughter pray for me. Lord help. Uh, <laughs> because I don't <laughs> use medicine. And I was taught to cook with love and um to taste as you go along and to season absolutely every little thing and that way when it's all incorporated you have a melody of flavors to tantalize your pack but um it's like when you have when you have chicken and dress it's it's not just chicken and dressing it tastes like this the chicken actually tastes like something then the dressing actually tastes like something else so it's two it's two different marryings because everything is seasoned by itself it's it's nothing that doesn't get just thrown in a pot and that's it you know so that's why everything's so good i think one of my pet peeves uh when i go out to eat is to have to pick up the salt 
And I love black pepper. I put pepper on anything. But a pet peeve of mine is to have to pick up salt. And that's one thing that uh, I take pride in, that my food is seasoned. It's not over seasoned. It's not under seasoned. It's, it's seasoned to perfection. And if you pick up the salt, you might need to go and get a COVID test. <laughs> because you've lost your your, your sense of taste. <laughs> I uh, like that. That's a new slogan. I will say this: uh, we were uh, when we get fired up and rolling here. What do you think? Probably, I'm thinking first of the month we, we should be rolling. Uh, we have I got an agreement with uh, the meat shop there in uh, Union City, Tennessee. We love those guys over there. They're, that whole family of folks is awesome. Uh, they donated a lot during the uh, the time of the tornado and stuff, and have to sit with all that. Uh, but we'll be located right next to the meat shop. That's First Street, I believe. Correct? I think That's so. That's correct. Yes. We'll be right next door to the right of them. Uh, big red, me so hungry. Come eat it up, y'all. We feed you long time. <laughs> and you'll be, um, what are your hours going to be? I went over there to pick up some stuff from the meat shop the other day, and they were closed. So they closed early. So Or they they closed at 5, I think. So you got to get there early. I, I will be there from 10.30 a.m. to 6 p.m. Perfect. So I can stop by on my way home. Um, yeah, you, you, you've got our number. All you got to do is call if you want to put your, give your wife a rest or something. Get, come get us some food. <laughs> and we, we, we have a, I have a, we have a lot of families that, uh, well, the husbands are actually ordering because they're giving their wife mm -hmm. a day off or two days off and they'll call me. All I need is a, a like a two day notice and I can have you prepared for, for your family. So a lot of a lot of husbands are doing that as a as a treat to their to their wives. Hint, husbands, uh, Valentine's Day is coming up, and birthdays. Hint, hint. <laughs> <laughs> and I bet you make like a whole pie, don't you? That I could buy. Yeah. Oh, yes, yeah. absolutely. There's not there. I, I tell you what. There's not a day out of the week that you could call me and I would not have something already ready. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. Now tell me a little bit, you, you mentioned uh, the tornadoes, the recent tornadoes. Um, you guys got out there as I remember seeing on Facebook and, and helped out a little bit, didn't you? Yeah. It just, um, just when we went through there just to see the families out in the yard and they were comforting one another and crying and going through the rubble. And it literally looked like someone had dropped a bomb and I, I just knew that feeling because when I lost my house, I lost everything. I just know that feeling of of hopelessness and helplessness and to just be so blessed to be less than two miles from all that destruction. And, and we didn't suffer any loss. We didn't have any damages. Uh, I just we just want to give back. We we fed at least every day. We fed at least 30 folks. Uh, we tried to get some of the folks that. Um, you know, like the workers and stuff. Some of those guys, man, didn't even have a break. And I know that they had been there almost, you know, 18, 20 hours. And, uh, you know, they, you know, that's, you know, you need, they, they really did. We've been blessed with the, this. I don't know. It's like I said, we, it hit a mile from our house, you know, and, and just to go up there and see all these families that are just, I mean, there's one house that the whole roof's gone off the, and there's, you know, you see some people there cleaning up stuff and, we said, hey, guys, are y'all hungry? Uh, we've ran out of food. We're going to go back home, get some more food. And I said, well, how many plates y'all need? And they're like, well, we need like 15. You know, that that's 15 folks that, you know, would have been looking for something to eat that night, you know. And so we came back, and here they all came. And we, we, get, we gave all of it out. It was It's, it's really it, – it's a blessing to be a blessing, if that makes any sense at all. But uh, – We've really uh, soaked it all in, and this little town of Canton is really powerful, man. And uh, there's some lot, of, lot of good folks in all this area, and uh, um, I really enjoy. I, I don't miss Jackson a bit. <laughs> yeah, I was going to ask you now. You guys have, uh, you know, God sent you to a, a place to live. Um, how's it working out? Are you loving living out there? I Just, I love it. Yeah, Absolutely love it. And yeah. and. Uh, both businesses were doing really well. I, and I say both businesses because uh, I'm a hairdresser also. So we had a hair salon and everyone was asking, well, Tanya, you just, you just going to up and move. What about your businesses? And I, and my response was, God will not send anyone anywhere that he hasn't al already made provision for them. So we came and I said, and I'm not going to be driving back and forth from Kenton to Jackson, trying to make money. We were in Kenton, 
about two weeks before we got our first job. And it's just been uphill since then. Wow. That's amazing. Um, I really appreciate you guys being on here, uh, sharing this with me and making me so hungry. I'm going to go home, go home and have to get something to eat. <laughs> um, you guys um, have uh, been so much fun to talk to. Um, and I'm so fascinated. And when did you say uh, I can look for you to be um, out there next to the to the meat shop? About the first of February, mm-hmm. we're we're still having to get some uh, get some cabinets put in our trailer. Uh, waiting on a, a fire extinguisher. Yeah, still that's... waiting on a, a fire extinguisher that's been on back order. We <laughs> have we, we had to have two different kinds. You know, it's, we we, we want to follow all the rules and do everything like it's supposed to do. You know, so we can. Uh, we're ready to get out there, though. I'll tell you that. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll Monday through Saturday. We won't be open Sunday because we're going to go to church and we're going to give that time to God and, and just spend in some you know, family time with one another. But uh, Monday through Saturday from 1030 to 6 p.m. And as far as menu items, we'll, we'll have we're going to have a, uh, you know, a, a hot meal like a. A, a meet and yeah we'll do short yeah. order every day also so but we will still have home cooked meals every day too well so, i'm gonna be one of your first customers and one of your most frequent customers i promise awesome. 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 <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys very much god bless Thanks to all of you listeners who've joined us today at Discovery Park of America. Our mission here is to inspire children and adults to see beyond. To plan an experience here for you and your family, visit discoveryparkofamerica.com.